Lastly, let me talk a little bit about where privileges actually reside in reality. So we have our data that's being managed by a database system, and typically we'll have application developers who are working directly with the database system, often developing modules that will be invoked by the end users. So those application developers have to have privileges on the database to create the modules. But then we have the software that sits above the database system that is used by end users, and the end users typically don't have privileges themselves. They might have separate privileges to access the, access the modules, but they're not going to be using the privilege system of the database system. And similarly, there may be even more software layered on top of the software that the application developer builds. And again, that software itself wouldn't be having database privileges, but might have an authorization system for the software that it's accessing. To summarize, database authorization is important. It makes sure that users only see the data that they're authorized to see. It guards the database against being modified by malicious users. There's a privilege system similar to file system privileges, but specific to database constructs, and users can only operate on the data for which they're authorized via their privileges. There's a grant statement and a revoke statement in the SQL standard for granting privileges and revoking privileges. And again, when a relation is created, the owner of the relation starts with all privileges. So that's where the granting would begin. And finally, for uh, having privileges that go beyond simple table level operations, views are a very important construct. And in fact, authorization is one of the most important uses of database views.